Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Justin Godfrey, and I am the Chief of Byrne Fire Department. The purpose of this press briefing is to provide information on the fire incident that occurred two days ago at a Food Lion, a local grocery store at 1010 and James Street. Before I get into the details about the fire incident, I want to express the emotional tough time that the fire, Byrne Fire Department has experienced with losing one of our own. During the suppression of the fire, we lost one firefighter and three firefighters were injured for the same engine company. The deceased firefighter, Mr. John Smith, a six year veteran of the department and city native who leaves behind his wife and one son. On behalf of the men and women of the Byrne Fire Department, I want to offer my sincere condolences to the family, friends, and coworkers of Mr. John Smith. He was an exceptional firefighter that was passionate and dedicated to his job. The details of the incident, as I can report to you at this time, are as follows. On Monday, May 11, 2020, at 9.10 a.m., the Burn Fire Department was dispatched to a fire at Food Lion Grocery Store located at 741 James Street. Immediately upon arrival, four firefighters from Engine 1 entered the building through the front door to search for employees and patrons who might have been trapped in the fire. It was discovered that the facility was empty. After a few minutes into the search, the fire began to flash over in the ceiling area above the firefighters, flooding the room with smoke and flames, essentially trapping the four for a significant period of time. All four firefighters were using their self-contained breathing apparatuses and all were running out of oxygen supplied through the apparatus. Firefighter John Smith became trapped under a small table in a small room approximately 75 feet inside the front door due to falling debris and wiring. At the time he was located, he was in full cardiac and respiratory arrest and was immediately transported to Wake Med Trauma Center. The other three firefighters made their way out of the building and suffered from severe smoke inhalation and first and second degree burns on their hands and neck and were immediately transferred to the North Carolina JC Burn Center, where the conditions are unknown. We are unable to release their names at this time and ask that you please respect their family's privacy. The company officer, Mr. Robert Doe, stated, before we knew it, smoke and flames came down on us. As you can see, the flames and smoke rushing through the building. Burn Fire Department remained on the scene for the remainder of the day, finding hot spots and suppressing them using caution as the building's structural integrity was compromised. The fire does appear to be suspicious in nature and a person of interest has been identified. The Burn Fire Department being assisted by the Burn Police Department and the State Fire Marshal Office are actively investigating the cause of the fire. With that, I'm going to open up for questions. I do want to start with our local affiliates to make sure they get their questions answered. I'm going to ask that you state your name and the affiliation that you represent when you ask a question. Please speak loudly. Amy Wyatt here from WTVD Channel 11. Why did a firefighter self-contained breathing apparatus run out of oxygen? Thank you, Amy. That is a good question. The time rating for a self-contained breathing apparatus is based on standard rate of consumption for a typical adult under low exertion conditions. Firefighters typically consume air much faster due to the activities they, they are performing, such as carrying hose packs, hitting an object with an ax, or even crawling. We perform self-contained breathing apparatus consumption exercise drills to learn to use air more efficiently and controlling breathing rate. But even firefighters that use best possible air management practices can become trapped inside a building by a structural collapse and the oxygen supply can run out, which is what occurred here. Any more questions? Pam Jones here with WRAL TV5. So you believe this fire was arson? Can you tell me if you have any further information on the suspect? Thank you, Pam. This fire is currently under investigation, but what I can tell you is that the fire appears to be suspicious in nature and a person of interest has been identified. This is all I can tell you at this time. Any more questions? Allison Stevens here with Apex Local News. Do you know what started the fire? Thank you, Allison. We can confirm that the fire started in a loading dock area of the store and it does appear suspicious. 
At this time, this is all I can share since the fire is currently under investigation. Any more questions? Jess Smith here with Durham Herald. Was the building sprinklered and was the system operational? Thank you, Jess. In the pre incident report, it does show that the building was equipped with a sprinkler system. We are currently investigating to make sure this system was operational. Any more questions? Judy Allen here with Cary News. How long did it take you to get the fire under control and what and reach the trapped firefighters? Thank you, Judy. We were able to reach the trapped firefighter after nearly 20 minutes of him being trapped. The National Fire Protection Agency requires this self-contained breathing apparatus to be rated for 30 minutes, but the oxygen may last only 15 minutes under these hard conditions. Any more questions? Okay, thank you. That concludes our press briefing.